how to fix the focus in your Chroma Cube Pan camera. In the previous video, I, mean, I showed samples of this camera with the Hoga lens on there, with the high quality Schneider 47 millimeter lens on there, and none of them had great quality. And as I suspected, the problem is the film plane. Um, because there's no pressure plate in this camera to keep the film perfectly flat, and because there's 3D printed, um, there's just too much of a gap, at least on my model, between the back of the camera, the sort of ridges that it has, and where the actual film plane is. So I spent the last couple days, I've tweaked it, and it is so much better. I was able to take the focus from something that looks like this to make it look something like this. So now what I'm gonna do is take a couple of minutes here and walk you through the process that I did, give you the exact materials, the specifications, and the thickness that you need to do if you have this camera, as well as some thoughts on how not to break your camera if you decide to do this minor modification. Let's go in the studio and I'll show you how it works. So what do you need to do this modification? First and foremost, a micrometer. This is like 20 bucks. This is a general brand one. You can get any good hardware store. Highly recommend a micrometer. You'll use it for this project and a million other projects in the future. Uh, you're gonna wanna get some Teflon tape. I put a link to the Teflon tape. I bought mine on Amazon. A roll of the stuff lasts like a million years. Um, and it is invaluable. So many of the old vintage cameras that I have from the 20s and 30s have rough surfaces on the inside that can easily scratch modern film. I just put a layer of this Teflon tape, it's very thin on the inside, and the film just flies over it perfectly. And so many of the pinhole cameras that I work with, same thing. In this camera, Teflon tape solved all the problems. Um, and that's the two main things that you need is Teflon tape and a micrometer. I also had some thin black plastic in my studio. The black plastic is probably half a millimeter thick or something like that. This came with some scanning stuff that I had and I used it as a support, but you don't necessarily need this if you don't want to use it. Okay, so the first thing that I did is I took the lens off the camera and with the back closed and I shined a light in there, I could see that there was a fairly big gap between where the back plate was and where the film plane was, and that was causing all the problems. So you can already see mine already has the Teflon tape on the inside. So I started by building up Teflon tape on this side. You can see that you need to make a little cutout right here in order for this gear not to be blocked, but that was pretty easy. I started with a little piece of that black plastic that I talked about and just cut it down to fit the ridges that are over here and I notched out that little section. So that's the first thing that I did. And then I started adding layers of Teflon tape across it to hold it down nice and tight and provide a very smooth surface for the film to transport. It's absolutely awesome. And what I found was that three layers of translucent uh, Teflon tape plus the thickness of this equals exactly one millimeter. And that was perfect. That one millimeter was exactly what I needed in order for the focus to be spot on. I'm trying to focus on the micrometer here, there we go. And it was one millimeter thick. So this side here gets built up one millimeter. I also found at that point that I could put a little tiny strip of Teflon tape. Once again, you have to cut out for the gear here because that's what tells you how much you have to advance. By putting just a very thin strip here and having to go over the edges, the tension between the two makes the film just slide so perfectly. I think sometimes when I was getting a little too thick down here, it was causing the film to bind up here. And by only going the three layers of tape plus uh, this black plastic, which once again, if you don't have the black plastic, just make it so you've got a millimeter worth of tape running through here, probably something like five or six pieces of tape would be about perfect. And then put one little strip here. Now, when you close the camera up and you're advancing the film, it still should slide very smoothly. If you feel tension or a lot of tension, that's not good. Because what can happen is you could break on the rewind, you know, these sprockets here that hold the film cassette. You don't want to damage the gears in here. So going a little less is always better than going just a little more. And I didn't see, by the way, a big focus difference between say, three pieces of tape and four or five pieces of tape. I would rather be just a whisker loose than a little tight because once again, I wouldn't want to harm the plastic gears inside of the camera. 
So let's take again a quick look at the original image. It looks okay, but once you zoom in, it's just not sharp. That Schneider 47 lens is razor sharp, and it should be really crisp and really dimensional. And as we're zooming in, you can see it's just not there. But now if we click on and look at the new image, it's a big wow. And I had to focus approximately a uh, set for the handicap uh, parking sign in my parking lot. And if we zoom in on that, look at how crisp it is. Look at how the branches and everything behind it just have tremendous clarity and tremendous sharpness. And that's really a wonder I wanted to see. It's amazing the difference that literally just one millimeter can make, but it's a huge difference, especially with 35 millimeter film. So one of the next things that I'm looking at is the viewfinder. As you know, I was not a fan of the viewfinder in the cube pan, nor was I really a fan of the viewfinder in the Holga 135 pan, though this is definitely better. Now I'm working with a Zeiss, Leica, and a Voigtlander viewfinder and modifying them either internally or externally to show the proper aspect ratio. Um, so far, the Voigtlander has been really great. You know, you can pick one of these up for less than 100 bucks on eBay. Obviously, a Leica and the Zeiss ones are the best of the best. They're so beautiful, are significantly more money. But uh, I'll do another video on taking these apart if you happen to have one of these uh, and different types of modifications. And I'll give you my thoughts on these as well as some exciting new wide angle lenses. Angle lenses like the 0.5 wide angle, the telephoto, the fisheye, macro attachments, all of which I was able to find on eBay and all of which are coming tomorrow. So thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.